Back in the newly ploughed fields, a man is sowing seed, which he's carrying in a wickerwork basket. Like the ox herd, he seems to be rather well dressed, with a brimmed felt hat and again a silver buckled belt. He's accompanied by his dog, who chases off a hungry crow. Meanwhile, another crow, behind his back, is busily pecking seeds from his sack. As soon as the seed is sown, the ground is harrowed. The harrow, a spiked wooden frame, here pulled along by a horse with a heavy leather collar, is dragged over the ground to break up clods of earth and to bury the seed before the birds can get at it. Behind the harrow walks a man with a slingshot who hurls stones at the birds. The pages of the Psalter are filled with pictures of birds, some of which are recognisable, while others seem to be products of the artist's imagination. On the edge of one page, there's a bird being caught in a net. The bird catcher may well have been employed by Sir Geoffrey to get birds for the kitchen. The farming sequence ends with harvesting, which takes place in late summer, and it's a task which brings everyone into the fields, the women as well as the men. The crop, which seems here to be barley, is cut with sickles and knotted into sheaves. This is hot and back-breaking work. An interesting artistic touch is that one of the harvesters has a hairstyle which echoes the shape of the wheat sheaf behind him. Once harvested, the corn is beaten with wooden flails to separate the kernels from the husks and the straw. The straw would be used for bedding and for animal feed. Each peasant family, in exchange for their labours, would have a strip of land and their own share of the corn, which they'd need to have ground into flour. Corn flour, made into a porridgey mush, was probably the most important part of their diet. There were two mills that they could use, both belonging to the Luttrell family. One was a windmill, seen here guarded by the miller's dog, who'd have been useful in keeping rats away. Milling is dusty work, and you can see that the miller keeps a water bottle tucked under his belt. The Luttrell's other mill was a water mill, powered by the river which ran through the estate. It seems from the picture that the miller and his wife earned extra money by catching eels, as there are eel nets a little way upstream. In an age when peasants ate very little meat, eels would have made a welcome addition to their diet. The gathering in of the harvest would have been a time of celebration among rich and poor alike. There are two scenes showing heavily laden hay wagons. One shows a family lending their weight to a team of horses as they struggle up the edge of the page. The other, without explanation, shows a hay cart driven by a stern-looking monkey wearing a backward-turned peak cap and cracking a huge whip. The Psalter includes many scenes of games and revels which might be related to the bringing in of the harvest or some other festival in the calendar. There's a whole cluster of pictures showing acrobats and entertainers. One of the performers is dressed as a bishop with a jumping dog. Another man has a performing ape turning somersaults. There's also a rather gruesome scene of bear baiting, in which a muzzled bear, chained to a post, is being set upon by a fierce pack of dogs urged on by their owners. 
The bear handler is beating the dogs off with a stick, while the bear itself has grabbed one in its claws. These were barbaric times. When dealing with the monsters in the Psalter, which in the Middle Ages were also known as babwins or baboons, the artist lets his imagination run riot, creating nightmarish beings with human faces and limbs freakishly grafted onto the bodies of animals, birds, fishes and reptiles. One thing which the Psalter doesn't show, amid all the celebration of the lateral possessions, is a picture of the family home. What it does show, though, is a walled city with a procession passing through its gates. If you look closely, you can see timber-framed houses with thatched roofs, a town hall, a market square with a cross, and a maze of narrow alleys. The great stone walls have arrow slits to be used by archers if the city should come under attack. We don't know for certain which city this is meant to be, but it could be Stamford, a walled city 12 miles to the south of the Luttrell's home at Earnham. Streaming through the gates under the raised portcullis is a finely dressed procession led by dancers and musicians one of whom is playing a pipe and a small drum called a table. He's only one of many musicians in the manuscript, playing flutes and drums, hurdy-gurdies, organs, fiddles and tambourines. The many musicians in the Psalter could be linked to the words of the final psalm, number 150. Praise ye the Lord, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the harp, praise him with stringed instruments and organs, praise him upon the loud cymbals, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. In the second of our two programmes, we'll go back to the world of Sir Geoffrey and take a look at a medieval banquet. We'll examine the religious pictures in the Psalter and look at warfare. And we'll take another look at the beasts, the babwins, which haunt the pages of this extraordinary book.